Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Have you ever had an experience where you saw something that you knew was familiar, but then later you thought it was some kind of illusion? I have. I saw Ridley from Metroid a lot of times, and on my 16th time I thought he was some kind of alien, but now I know that he is a dragon. Sandy's Rocket is the episode where Sandy lets Spongebob come with her on an expedition to the moon, and Spongebob and Patrick end up thinking everyone in Bikini Bottom are aliens. This episode aired on September 17, 1999 and showed the audience the scientist side of Sandy for the first time, which becomes much more prominent in the series after the Spongebob Squarepants movie. I've gone over this before, but after the aforementioned movie, a lot of characters had personality changes which people didn't respond to the best, and it wasn't until after the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water where most characters started to return to how they were during seasons 1, 2, and 3. It feels like people assume Sandy's smart side came during that era of the show, and people don't like her as much since she rarely showed her extreme side during that time. I'm going to counteract that argument right now by saying that while her extreme side wasn't shown as much during that time, it was still in some episodes like episodes 137, Karate Island from season 4, 318, The Way of the Sponge from season 8, 350, Squid Defense from season 9, etc. And that her scientist side was shown or at least implied during this time, like this episode, episode 62, Squirrel Jokes, where Spongebob says Sandy is the smartest critter in Bikini Bottom, and episode 117, Pranks a Lot, where she is shown with an escape pod, which she most likely built herself. Anyway, I feel that this side of Sandy isn't bad by any means, and while people may not think it's as cool as her karate side, I still feel it's a good side of her. Despite that, I have heard some mixed feelings about this episode in particular. It's not awful by any means, but still has a few unpopular opinions. So let's watch this episode and see how Sandy's scientist side was introduced, and see if it's really that mixed. So the episode starts up, and Spongebob is running to Sandy's tree dome to see her. When he arrives, Sandy's rocket appears right next to the tree dome, and Sandy calls down to him. You know what I just realized? We haven't seen Sandy the last 10 episodes in a row. It's about time we see her again. Sandy tells Spongebob she's going to the moon. Spongebob wants to go with her, but Sandy doesn't let him after some kind of mishap with some kind of whirly bird. Did I miss something here? When did that happen? Sandy tells Spongebob that the trip is for science, not fun, and that she has no room for him, no matter how much he asked. He proceeds to beg, and she finally lets him ride in the cargo hold as long as he doesn't touch anything, but Spongebob was still excited. Later on, Spongebob sees Sandy's pop gun, and he asks if they'll be hunting aliens, but Sandy says that it's for harvesting moon rocks. Spongebob says that it can be used for alien hunting, but Sandy says she's been to the moon and knows there's no aliens. Spongebob tries to convince her otherwise, but Sandy tells him to go home and get some sleep and be back at the break of dawn and not talk about aliens. Now I'm no scientist, but I'd say if somebody's been to the moon and they know there's no aliens, I'd say listen to the smarter character. Later that night, Spongebob is trying to sleep, but is having trouble getting to sleep. Believe me, I'm an expert on trying to fall asleep. Patrick shows up and asks if the rocket is alien proof. Spongebob tells Patrick there are no aliens, but he seems to have his mind changed after Patrick shows him window protecting that stops aliens called Alien Out. He then decides to spray the windows. When Spongebob and Patrick arrive at the rocket, Patrick goes inside despite Spongebob constantly telling Patrick they were just there to spray the windows. They end up in the control room and Patrick starts playing with something in the room. Spongebob tries to get Patrick to leave but then sees himself in a funny looking mirror. Patrick then pulls an eject lever and they fly out of the rocket and land back in. They then press a button which causes some kind of violent vibrating which they do twice. After that, Spongebob accidentally launches the rocket and Sandy woke up, annoyed by Spongebob. As he and Patrick are falling through the rocket, it leaves the ocean and stops falling because they were in space. The rocket starts circling around the moon and Spongebob and Patrick were having fun in zero gravity. Then the rocket goes back into the ocean and things become heavy again, so they thought they were landing. Ah, so leaving the ocean automatically makes things lighter and vice versa. I don't feel that much lighter, and I'm above water. 
Sandy then heads up to the moon to find Spongebob. Meanwhile, the rocket landed back in Bikini Bottom and Patrick sees Gary. But Spongebob thinks that there are aliens that are trying to confuse them by projecting their memories onto the environment of the moon. So Spongebob captures Gary with a pop gun thinking he's an alien and then he finally remembers Sandy. He starts to worry that she'll hate them but she'll forgive them when he brings her back a real life alien. So Spongebob and Patrick decide to go on an alien hunting spree which in reality they meant they were going to shoot all their friends with the pop guns. They start by going to Squidward's house. They walk inside, see Squidward sleeping, and notice his hot water bottle thinking it's an egg sack. Then the suction cups on Squidward's right hand stick to Patrick's helmet and they both start to freak out which wakes Squidward up. They then try to capture him but he runs away so they chase him. Then they see Mr. Krabs coming by and capture him too. They throw Squidward and Mr. Krabs into the rocket and go on to capture more citizens of Bikini Bottom like Mrs. Puff, Flats the Flounder, and Larry the Lobster until they capture everybody in town. Sandy then arrives back in Bikini Bottom and starts to scold Spongebob and Patrick for ruining her science experiment, but they think she's an alien and capture her anyway. Really? She then realizes it was all about aliens and tries to explain they were still in Bikini Bottom, but they don't listen. Then Spongebob and Patrick think they were aliens and try to shoot each other, but Patrick ends up capturing himself. Spongebob starts to drive the rocket back to see Sandy, but the rocket breaks down on the moon, and then Spongebob finally realizes the mistake he's made. Everybody from the cargo hold calls out to Spongebob saying they want a word with him, and the episode ends. Is that seriously where it ends? I'm surprised Spongebob and Sandy are still friends in the future. So that was Sandy's rocket, and now this is the part where I analyze it. Starting off, let's get the worst out of the way and address what I said about the mixed feelings. First off, the fact that Spongebob and Patrick are constantly talking about aliens and are just capturing everybody with the pop guns gets repetitive pretty quickly. And while Spongebob and Patrick aren't very smart, how can they think aliens are trying to trick them right as the rocket lands? Also, they should know that neither of them were aliens and that Sandy wasn't an alien since she flew down from the sky in a jetpack to scold them for ruining her science experiment. And why does the episode just end with the rocket on the moon? I don't know why, but it sometimes feels weird when an episode ends like this, when there's some kind of situation and no proper resolution. I know things will be back to normal by the next episode, but it can still feel a bit incomplete at times. So I can understand how this run of the episode can cause some fans to dislike it. Despite that, there are some funny moments when they were going alien hunting, like when they encounter Squidward and when Mrs. Puff inflates inside the sack. I also enjoy a lot of other scenes in the episode, like the silly scenes in Zero Gravity, the eject and vibrating scenes inside the rocket, Spongebob trying to go with Sandy to the moon, and Patrick accidentally capturing himself. Since we are also exposed to Sandy's scientist side for the first time in this episode, I have to say it's shown off well. She built her own rocket and knows what kind of experiments she was going to conduct. Of course, all we know about is that it has something to do with moon rocks, but she still knew what she was doing. So in my opinion, it's still a good side to her and it shouldn't immediately be disregarded by fans just because it may not be as entertaining as her extreme sports and karate side. And now that I say this, I think I now understand why they went for the angle of Spongebob and Patrick going alien hunting instead of Sandy conducting her experiment. It probably would have been much slower if it was nothing but her observations. The alien hunting is a more interesting angle, but it also puts the episode in a bit of a stupider position. Of course, the alien hunting also got old pretty quickly, so what the hell am I trying to say here? To sum it up, I have to say, this episode is not perfect and it might feel like one of the weaker episodes of season 1, but it's still rather enjoyable. There are some good jokes throughout the episode and Sandy's scientist side is still a good part of her character. It may be a bit underrated, but it's still a good episode at the end of the day. Sandy's Rocket was a little unsure at parts, but it's still a solid episode. It's far from bad. However, I'm still trying to figure out how they got lighter by just leaving the ocean. How does that anti-gravity trick work? Oh. I'm beginning to think it doesn't work after all. <laughs>